Welcome to the Weekly Dividend Recap for the week of March 10th, 2023. I'm Nick, host of the Dividend Growth Income Channel. The Weekly Dividend Recap is a weekly news video series put out on Friday evenings to briefly sum up some of the latest news around your favorite dividend-paying stocks. If this is something you enjoy, please consider liking and subscribing to help us out in the algorithm to spread the amazingness that is dividend growth investing. And folks, I'm just a regular guy, not a financial advisor. This series should not be taken as financial advice, so let's get into it. Week 10 of 2023 has been one for the books. The S&P 500 is down almost 5% just in the last week. SCHD is also down 5% in the last week. This price is just sitting below $72, the lowest it's been in 2023. Hopefully we can get it under that $70 mark for a while. That would be most excellent. Now, long-term dividend growth investors who are still building their portfolios should look at weeks like this as an opportunity. See, I dollar cost average anyway, but now my money is going to go even further. I lock in a better starting yield. I can average down on some of my favorite positions, right? Tough times aren't over yet, my friends, as this week has shown. The drop in stocks was led by the financial sector when Silicon Valley Bank shocked its investors, stating they needed to raise $2.25 billion, and shares of the company dropped over 60%, and 48 hours later, the bank was shut down by regulators. This is the second largest bank collapse in U.S. history after the 2008 financial crisis. This is what we call a BFD. And I don't think we're still entirely sure what's happened here. This brought down bank stocks like your Bank of America and J.P. Morgan down 11% and 6% respectively this last week, as well as regional banks and other financial institutions. Like Charles Schwab, ticker SCHW, they dropped 23% over the last week. This event certainly created what looks like some opportunities in this sector, but I do urge caution we could see things continue to decline What this whole SVB incident highlights is the need to diversify. Just a few weeks ago, we had Kramer go on CNBC and telling his viewers that SVB stock was a buy. In REIT news, the website Simply Safe Dividends, it's a site we use for our research and making these videos and for evaluating the safety of our dividends. They have reevaluated a handful of retail REITs and have updated their dividend safety scores for these companies. All three of them Upgrades. First, we had National Retail Properties, ticker NNN. This has been upgraded from a score of 70 to 80. This was based on NNN's declining payout ratio combined with its 33-year dividend growth streak. Shares of NNN are yielding about 5% now with its latest dividend raise at about 4%. Very solid retail REIT. Second, we have Agri Realty. Ticker ADC with its 1,800 single-tenant properties has been upgraded from a score of 61 to 70. The upgrade for this mid-cap was made based on a steady payout ratio of about 70% and predictable cash flow from long-term triple net leases and a 99% occupancy rate. Shares of ADC are yielding 4.15% with its latest dividend raise at 2.6%. This is one we own in our public dividend portfolio here on the channel. And finally, everyone's favorite, the monthly dividend REIT Realty Income, ticker O, was upgraded from a safety score of 70 to 80. The score was based on the company's sustained high occupancy, diversified portfolio, and fiscal conservatism combined with a healthy payout ratio. Shares of O are yielding about 4.81%, and its dividend has grown by 4% over the last year. I am also an O shareholder. And then moving along, we had a monumental dividend raise this week from specialty retailer Dick's Sporting Goods, ticker DKS. The dividend was boosted by 105% when they announced they are paying an even $1 for their next dividend, up from its last payment of $0.49. This brings Dick's annual dividend to $4 a share. Shares of Dick's jumped over 10% on the news, pushing it to all-time highs. The dividend payout ratio is still quite low, both in terms of earnings and free cash flow, so this looks like a reasonably safe dividend at this time, with a simply safe dividend safety score of 80. Dix now has seven straight years of dividend growth, so congrats to all those who are holding Dix. All right, let's quickly cover some more dividend raises that were announced over the last week. We have semiconductor company Qualcomm, ticker QCOM, announcing its 20th consecutive dividend hike, raising their dividend by 6.7%. 
the dividend payable in June will be raised from $0.75 cents per share every quarter to $0.80 cents per share, bringing its total annual payout to $3.20. This is a company with an A-rated balance sheet and a dividend that is easily covered by earnings and free cash flow. Today's shares of Qualcomm are yielding 2.73%, sitting right in line with its five-year average yield of 2.73%, and with a P.E. ratio of 11.7%, a huge drop from its five-year average of 17 shares of Qualcomm are looking attractively valued. Next, we're looking at aerospace and defense industry with General Dynamics, ticker GD. They have announced a nearly 5% dividend raise, marking its 28th consecutive annual dividend hike. With its dividend safety score of 97 from Simply Safe Dividends, General Dynamics has no problem paying this dividend with them taking up a mere 40% of forward free cash flow. It's yielding 2.37% today, right in line with its average. You want to have your shares by April 13th to get that next dividend payment on May 12th in the amount of $1.32 for a total annual payout of $5.28 for General Dynamics. And how about this? Oracle, ticker ORCL. This is a huge database software company. They just hiked their dividend by 25%. Impressive. They waited until the last minute to announce this one to keep that dividend streak going, but hey, they say good things are worth waiting for. This marks 10 years of dividend raises with an average annual growth rate of 18% over that time from Oracle. Today's shares are yielding 1.84%. This is about 12% above Oracle's five-year average. This is an interesting pick in the tech sector. If you want that next dividend payment of $0.40, cents, you'll need to have your shares by April 10th. You'll be paid on April 24th. Moving along to the consumer staples sector, Colgate Palmolive, ticker CL, announcing a 2.1% dividend raise, upping its dividend from $0.47 cents per quarter to $0.48 cents per quarter. Pretty weak raise. You'd like to see a consumer staple like this do better, because dividends are kind of their thing, right? But looking at the free cash flow, it is higher than ideal, so I guess this is making some sense. I think that there are far better opportunities in this sector, but Colgate is a dividend king with 60 years of dividend raises, and get this, 128 years of paying that dividend uninterrupted. Much respect for that, but it's not for this dividend investor. But if it's for you, if you want to have that next dividend payment on May 15th, you want to have your shares by April 20th. Colgate paying $1.92 annually, and its shares are yielding at 2.7%. All right, let's look at the ex-dividend dates for some of our favorite dividend stocks in the week ahead. Here I have them laid out on the spreadsheet. On um, Tuesday, March 14th, it's a big one. A lot of REITs are going ex-dividend on this day, particularly the self-storage sector with extra space storage and public storage, among others. Also, you got Crown Castle, Iron Mountain, and Digital Realty Trust. And then we have Merck, which pays 43 cents on April 10th, T. Rowe Price paying $1.22 on March 30th, and Jack in the Box paying 44 cents on March 28th. For Wednesday, EOG Resources pays a buck on March 30th. And everyone's favorite medical REIT, MPW, they're paying $0.29 cent dividend on April 13th. For Thursday, March 16th, Coca-Cola is going ex-dividend, paying $0.46 cents per share on April 3rd. Also, Walmarts and Dick's Sporting Goods, which we mentioned earlier in the video. Now, I really saw nothing of note for March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, but on Monday, March 20th, shareholders of Maine, that's our day, will get $0.18 cents per share on March 28th. So going into next week, I'm going to be watching the financial sector closer. I think the SVB incident could also have some more unintended consequences than realized that hit other sectors too. But let's see how it all unfolds. I'm going to be focused on building my position in SCHD and perhaps looking at beefing up a couple of my higher conviction financial stocks, which long term I have a ton of faith in. That's all for today's episode, folks. I wanted to keep the weekly recap series short. It went a little longer than expected, but I think we covered a lot, and I think you hopefully found some value in this. This is the Weekly Dividend Recap, Episode 2 for Week 10 of 2023, brought to you by the Dividend Growth Income Channel. If you found value and want us to continue this series, if you could, please just do all the things that help us grow our show and channel, and have a wonderful weekend, my friends. <laughs>